Hi, I'm Tony White, and I'm going to show you how to simplify painting buildings by stripping them back into their basic shapes and removing all of the unnecessary clutter and even a little trick using vegetation to frame the building and make it pop. So let's get stuck in. Hi and welcome to this demonstration. I just want to show you a few photographs that'll help me sort of set the scene for what we're trying to do. There's a nice little church here with some buildings behind it, either side, and a nice sky. Nothing too dramatic. But this building, it's, uh, it's quite complex when you look at every brick and the arches and the curvature of that uh, little round turrety type section. So quite complex, but our job is to simplify, simplify which I've done here. Look at all these shapes. We've got some triangles, a couple of boxes, circles. You know, there's not much. You don't have to uh, complicate the hell out of everything. You just got to take notice of those dark areas. See the triangles there at the top and at the side, and you've got nice dark areas to, to play with. Here's a little sketch I did for it, just a little uh, little pen sketch, little thumbnail, and it's just really to get you in tune with the subject, do a little sketch, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just little bits of practice, mind practice, little getting your mind on the job, that's all we're after. And uh, from here, I'm looking at simplifying that distance, those buildings on the left, The star of our show is the main building, right in the middle. Well, it's over to the side, but uh, the main building we want to really enhance. Here's an example of a couple of things I've done before. So this reference picture, it's quite complex. We look at all those windows in the building. And then you have a look at the uh, the actual painting I did. This is a little sketch I did as a demo in class. And, you know, you've got not much detail in the way of the building, but it reads building. is just a little bit of it there, and it's simplified. We've got to simplify absolutely everything, and then you'll be okay. Things will work out a lot better, and you'll have, you'll have more success. And ultimately, it'll be more fun. That's the big thing. It's got to be fun. Otherwise, yeah, it's no point. Okay, so we're on screen, we're painting now, I've just got a very simple drawing, basic line drawing, and this is, uh, this is what we're, how we're going to approach this. Sprit just spritz the water a little bit at the top just to get the washers in, and we want, I've sort of decided to push the sky a bit, a bit stronger and a bit darker than the actual reference photo, uh, purely because I want to make that, uh, the light stand out on the building a little more. So by pushing that uh, sky around it, it'll help naturally bring out that light. I'm just laying in these washes. We'll see how we go. This big wash. Laying in this big wash and we're getting lighter down to the bottom, down toward the horizon. Just sort of strengthening it up a little bit there again. And keep your brush flowing, you'll be fine. Now, the underneath, so you've got to think of the lightest part of your building and what will the lightest part be. That's kind of what we're trying to paint now. Ended up being a little strong, so I'll just wash it out a bit with water, let it run down, and that just forms a nice little underneath basis for, for what we're after. And this uh, foreground, we just just whack a colour on, doesn't matter, it'll be underneath a big, big shadow later on anyway. Big, strong shadow. And we just wet it down and we start to dry it off. We'll dry it off in a second. Important to let things dry between coats, absolutely. And you can see now, see it dries off a lot lighter. You've always got to prepare for that. So I'm just going to start by, just going to start by playing in this uh, background area on the left. Now we want to simplify these buildings just to a shape. We just want shapes, that's all. We're not, uh, we're not after details or anything, it's just pure shapes. 
And if we do it quite cool in tone, so we've got a, you know, it's based around blue. And if we do it do a bit cooler, it's going to push it back. And it's, you know, as long as you've got a couple of shapes in there that read properly, read like uh, windows or rooftops, you're laughing. You don't have to worry about all the other rubbish. This is, uh, you don't want to put too much of all of that stuff all the time. You just want, you know, nice and simple in the background. Treat it just as that, just as a background. Same kind of thing on the right, except I've just brought these a little bit closer just by making them a bit stronger, that's all. Nothing, uh, nothing too dramatic. And just put a couple of trees in. Don't worry about your brushes being precious, just get in and use them, they're tools. Just getting back through into the shadow side of our building. Now we've got to go strong enough, okay? We've got to go strong enough when we do this. Always run the risk of going too light. And that's no good when that happens. So you've got to go, got to go strong enough, but you can always glaze it, but you know, that's fine. And that ended up being a little bit too weak. So there was a, a glaze to come afterwards, but uh, you can see what I'm doing. I'm just putting that shadow side in and just sort of tidying things up as I go, straightening things. There was a couple, there were a couple of little funny, uh, funny little parts of the building, little lines that, that didn't make it too easy, but, um, but that's okay. So we just got the shadows in, it's not coming to life yet. It'll be okay. You gotta stay with your original plan and that was, it's gonna work. And I noticed now just by glazing over that shadow, it's, uh, it's already reading a lot better. It's coming out from the background a lot more. When you get to the bottom of a building, just, just sort of uh, abstract it a little bit, just, you know, put a couple of lines down there, spread it out a bit and sort of melt it into the, into the ground that it's on. I've got a bit of tissue here to get some texture. Just lay it on and lift it up. And you just get a couple of little marks and it, it just breaks it up and makes it look a little bit older. Splash some water on it, why not? You know, you, you're giving us the illusion of lots of rocks and stones and all that. So that's what we want, texture. Now we've got a thinner brush with some dry darks on there. See how complex those windows are? Those arches, they're just bang, straight in. It's already, you can see that it's starting to liven up a bit. Yeah, a few little directional lines for the for the circular or the cylindrical section there of the building. Please don't ever fall into the trap of painting every brick, indicating every brick. Just do it really roughly. Just do a couple of them. It'll speak a lot more than uh, painting every brick and you'll be there forever and it won't look anywhere near as good and it certainly won't look as artistic. Now this tree I've just made up, I've created this tree to in order to frame the building in a little bit, frame that rooftop in. And it ends up being a little bit stronger now, so it frames it in a bit better again, but we'll be okay. All right, this is just uh, framing the building in on the left hand side so uh, just by putting some darks down there it sort of brings that building back brings that building forward and pushes those distant buildings back even further and we're going along look at this we're just sort of abstracting we're putting a, a makeshift fence there i know there's a lot of fences and stone walls and all that kind of thing in the reference photo but you don't have to worry about following that reference slavishly we're we're painting, we're creating, we're not duplicating or replicating reality, okay? So you've got to put your own touches of, of artistic flair into your work. Otherwise, we're just copycats, you know? We don't want to be a copycat. So I'm just mixing up a shadow color. 
yeah, I wanted to be really strong, really strong shadow. So of going, basing it all around uh, ultramarine, burnt sienna, and a little bit of purple, and just in various uh, forms. But I want it to be quite strong, quite strong. So just keep mixing until you get it right, basically. Now, I've got that there, and on the left, I've just, uh, down there, the bottom left-hand corner, you can see that I've sprayed that before, and it's just going to give us a nice little soft edge there. And it looks dramatic, and it will it dries up a little bit lighter. It looks a, looks a bit strong there at the moment, but you've got to have faith that, it, that it's right, um, and you'll be okay, because it, it'll uh, come to life in a second. And you don't want a weak, insipid kind of shadow you want it to be nice and strong there you go so you can see after it's dried off it's lightened up a lot it's looking nice and just putting a few little highlights on and we should be right a couple little highlights not much just little dots and dashes and you know just a tiny bit of color here and there is is always good And I'm using some white out of the tube. It's, it's white watercolor, titanium white watercolor, just for tiny little highlights, makes a, makes a big difference. But you've got to be careful with how you use it, that's for sure. But um, great job. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks so much for joining me. I really hope this helped clear away some fog on your quest for painting better buildings in watercolor. I'll see you soon.